So, Pablo, congrats on the win. Um, in the first half, it seemed that some of the players weren't playing 100%. What was the halftime talk, and what changes did you see necessary in order to, to see the success that you saw in the second half? Yeah, I thought we were very um, laborsome with our possession um, across the back. That usually ended up going back to Gavin. And, and it's twofold. One, um, we're not scanning well enough in, in, in at, before we receive the ball, and we're trying to make our decision when we touch the ball, right? And if you want to gain any kind of advantage, you have to know where you're going before you get the ball. Cause space is closed quick, especially in the first half, because every, every team has energy. Um, the other part of that was we weren't moving their defensive block. So we played basically, uh, we played within, we played with the three center backs, didn't shift them to, to one side. So again, rotations are useful because it forces the whole block to move to one side. We were playing in, in a space of, I don't know what it was, 45 yards. And so your block just moves here and it moves here. Second half, we were able to get to the touch line get to the other touch line, and now gaps are opening up centrally to be able to penetrate. Um, and, I, and I think that was, a, that was the most important thing. The other, the other part, and what we've been talking about is, um, and, and I say this all the time, is that we haven't achieved anything, right? We, we were, I think we're a really good team, um, but I think our, our, our greatest impediment to where we want to go is ourselves and the ego, right? You saw in the first half uh, a bunch of players, after we scored the goal, playing as individuals. When we're at our best, we're playing as a team. And what you saw in the second half, the ball's moving. People are making selfless runs beyond to, to pull the team back. The tempo is different, right? And so uh, I think it's a little bit of, of, of all that. Tactically, it was we, we just weren't moving their block. I think it was more from a, for me, it was the psychological piece that really is like, that's not who we are. That's not who we are. We got 45 minutes. And I, and I told them, I said, the, go the soccer gods are on our side because with that performance, you're still in this game. And now we got to capitalize. These moments come very few in a season. We got to put our stamp on this game, go out with the right mentality, move the ball quick, have better reactions when we turn the ball over, and defend like we want to win the ball. Um, and again, credit goes to the guys for, for, you know, we can talk about it all we want, but it's really about execution. And, and the guys found solutions to, to, to problems on the field. And, and I think that's a big step for our group. Um, because we can talk about it in training, we can talk about it in the recap, but when you make the biggest gains in your career as an individual and a collective as a team is when you're solving problems in real time because you know that first half wasn't good enough. Pablo, did you sub Nelson Palacio on at halftime because of his range of passing, his ability to, as you say, move the ball sideline to sideline with just one quick 40-yard pass? That was, that was a part of it. A again, I, I felt like uh, you know, it's there's always m there's so many variables to all this stuff, but I, I just felt like um, Ameka and o Ojeda um, looked a little bit fatigued, right? The, the, it was real laborsome in the movements to find pockets, um, and then when we got pockets, taking too many touches to get the ball and break lines again. Um, so it was more from I just felt like freshening it up, um, and given that we just played a couple days ago and the guys put in a fantastic effort. And one of our highest, you know, outputs. That was, you know, so bringing Brody in, um, who's who can break lines off the dribble, bringing Nelson in, who's got a range of passing. I think helped us get to, to you know, to the more dangerous positions that we were able to achieve in the second half. It's not official, but the news has leaked out, and a lot of people have heard that Diego Luna isn't going to the Olympics. Any accident that he had a goal and three assists? Can you connect those two things? Uh, it's just, again, I think it's just, what do they call it, poking the bear, you know? Like, I think he plays with, uh, he's, 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 a, he's a player that plays with a chip on his shoulder. And, and tonight, in particular in the second half, again, was doing a lot of selfless running. Um, and the goal that he scores is everything that we've been talking about, is not drifting off and dropping in the midfield to get the ball. It's putting yourself in a position to score goals. And so I think tonight, you know, what it was, a goal and three assists. Um, so credit to Diego for his endeavor and, and really his quality. And again, selfishly for me and, and the rest of our team, you know, we got a top caliber player that's going to be available for, for the next 100 games. On the goal Katrana scored, was that off the training ground or was that just two guys saw an opportunity and took it? 
That was me telling Alex to get to the left side and, and <laughs> Luna playing him a good ball. Uh, and it, well, I did tell him that, but it wasn't from an attacking standpoint. It was, he's a left back, and if you're, why are you going to go to the right side and have to recover diagonally in this minute of the game? And so it was, it was a defensive setup, but it was Alex's execution. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Chicho gets his 17th goal. He's been on 16 for a while, and he had three good chances against Houston. What did it mean to, to him and to the guys to see him tie the club right Yeah, no, I think, you know, there's, there's always these runs of, of games where, you know, he's just not going to score every game. And, and, and I think he was putting a lot of pressure on himself um, in, in the last few games to really find that goal. Um, and, you know, credit – to uh, Ant and and and, and uh, you know and and Chicho always Chicho's always trying to find plays on set pieces to find space, um, and you know the two of them did a great job of identifying it, great delivery, and he's a killer in front of goal. And so I, I think now I think you can breathe, and not the pressure is lessened, and now he can play more free. Um, but just super super excited for him, um, and and I know what that does to the rest of the group as well. Um, and you see it in all the sports when, when the big guys, you know, putting balls in the back of the net, everyone else feels like they're two inches taller than they really are. Um, so, again, super happy for Chicho. What did you think of Brian Vera's performance since he hadn't trained with the team for two weeks? Yeah, that was a, it was a dicey call, I think. Um, and, you know, the decision was based on the fact that we have three games coming up. And we've been without Jay Gladden and Vera now for a few games. Um, and Oviedo and Bodie have done a fantastic job. Um, it's not easy in this league to play a different position, you know, against the opponents that we play against and, and play as well as they have. Um, but the thought was, you know, get him 60 minutes this game, have a good week of training, and now he's a, he, at least from a from his own psychological standpoint, he can now get it done and he can play 90 next week um, in lieu of a three-game week. But I, I thought his performance was really good. I mean. He's been literally training on a treadmill for, for 10 days, and that is not football. That's, that's get, making sure your heart's still working. Um, so the decisions that he made, the positions that he took, I thought were really good, and I think it shows growth from his level of professionalism to be able to come back in and contribute the way he did. You have seen these teams sitting really compact against you, and Montreal, the Galaxy, you got the early goal in this one. Those ones were shutouts. Is that something the club has to continue to work on? Is that a little bit of an Achilles heel right now? Yeah, again, I think it goes ball speed is huge. The tempo of the way we play is huge. So, again, if they're just standing there, the tendency is to want to provoke. But, like, we want to provoke with speed. And we want to provoke to get, to get a forward to come to find our, our third center back to then provoke 30 yards of space to then play it out wide. We want to go with tempo. Um, and, and again, those rotations are critical to move a low block. You have to rotate the ball because teams that are going to sit are fine moving 15, 20 yards. What's really hard is moving 30, 40 yards. Um, and the other part of that is I think we have to do a better job of switching the point of attack. Um, and, and more from when it comes to our, from our right side and we have an overload on the right side, Alex is naked all the time. And if we can get that switch once or twice, now teams don't know, you know, the right back on the weak, uh, on the weak side won't rotate as much. And when they don't, when they don't rotate, now you have the central penetration. So you're always playing, you're, you know, you're, you're, you're jabbing with your left to set up your right, right? And I think we just have to do a better job of that. You mentioned earlier you thought the team was tired. Um, I know people are waiting either for a ball over the top to Gomez or the ball played to his feet, and then he puts a move on somebody and blows by him. But he's played so many minutes. Do you still have that expectation for him, or uh, no? And that's what we talked about at halftime. We need we need Crooksy to run behind. We need Diego Luna to run behind. You got, and, and we need Chicho to run behind. It, it just can't be all Andres. And and again, that's that that's what I'm talking about about playing for the team. If we have 11 guys coming back to the ball, they can condense their 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 their, their defensive block. They can squeeze it because they just know. And it's so easy to defend when some guys receiving it with his back to goal. Now, you stretch them a couple times this way, stretch them a couple times this way, those gaps will open up because they're, they're fearful of the one behind that can actually punish them. So I think it's more of a collective. And what I've known with this group is that when everyone wants the ball at their feet, we, we end up playing like individuals and we take too many touches. It's when we play selflessly that we create space for our teammates, which then everyone scores goals and everyone is you know, the star. So 
it's really hitting on those on those type of things. And I think, uh, you know, just looking at the second half, I think it was a good example of what it looks like when we play as a team. Yeah. A lot of teams do come in here and, and play this way. Uh, three road games in a week isn't ideal, but are you ready for a new set of problems and go out on the road? Sure, yeah. I mean, I think this job, you know, from a coaching staff perspective is all about solving problems, I think. Um, and, and Chang said it best, you know, teams scout us, we scout them. We are the ones that have to find solutions on the field. And there's going to be solution, a lot, there's going to be a lot of problems in three games on the road. And, and, and if we have the right type of mindset, there's no doubt in my mind that, that, that I feel like we can come away with some results on the road. Let's go to Sydney on Zoom. Hey, Pablo, this is the on soccer.com. Congrats on the win tonight. Uh, my question was actually about Diego. It was answered earlier, but, you know, you mentioned he plays with a chip on his shoulder. You know, you mentioned kind of a matter of poking the bear. I mean, what, what conversations did you have with him today, if any, about the reports? You know, so they kind of trickled out. Well, again, you know, I, I had a conversation with, with, with Diego, and I give the same advice to every single player because, again, I can give advice through my experiences, um, but I have not walked a day in their shoes. And the only advice that I ever give players is, if I ask you to close your eyes in this moment, what do you feel? And, 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 that's, and that's really it. And I say, because again, at the end of the day, you have to be honest with, you, you have to be true to yourself. There's no one else in this life that is, that is more important um, than yourself, right? Because if you don't look after yourself, who does? Um, and, and Diego, you know, I'll let, I'll let Diego s speak to that. I don't want to, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but, um, but that was my advice to him is that this is about you. This is not about, you know, and, and then I'll let him, um, you know, again, speak, speak to his decision. Um, but, but again, I think Diego's a guy that's hungry. Diego's a guy that wants to play at the highest level. Um, he holds himself to an extremely high standard. Um, and has been an integral part of everything that we've been able to achieve this year. All right, guys, we're going to have Chicho in here next. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thank you.